Hi guitarlings, I'm Gray and this is Hub Guitar. We're here today to do the amazing tune November by Masaki Kishibe. Now this tune is a part of our lesson series by request. Uh, so I want to thank those of you who requested this tune and uh, kind of gave me that extra push to do a lesson on it. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about this tune is it's not in standard tuning. We're using the open D tuning. So I have a, uh, another video on how to get to open D tuning. I'm going to stick that below. Um, but basically, you take your big string, you drop it down a whole step to D, and then you take your little string, your, your highest string, and you drop that down a whole step to D. Then you take your second string, drop that to A, and then your third string, that's the weird one, instead of going down a whole step, that goes down a half step to F sharp. Then you're going to put a capo on the fourth fret. And uh, once you put the capo, I like to do a little bit of tweaking with the, uh, with the digital tuner just to make sure that the capo didn't alter the, uh, the intonation. So it's an open D capo at the fourth fret. Now there are some high notes that are kind of reachy if you don't have the cutaway. So you should feel free to move that capo position down a little bit if that's going to help you to have um, a better grasp. Especially, you know, if your guitar has one of those 12 fret bodies that where the body starts at the 12th fret instead of the 14th, definitely consider moving that capo down because it's going to be very hard to get to those higher notes with the capo at 4. I also want to thank Mr. Masaki Kishibe for um, for allowing all of this to happen, for giving me a permission to do a lesson on this tune and present it to you, and of course for writing so much amazing music. So please support him, uh, visit his channel, subscribe to him, and of course listen to his music and, and learn all of his tunes. Okay, so let's start at the A section. We've got a pickup, which is an open second string, and the fourth fret of the first string, and that's sliding up to the fifth fret before resolving back down to the fourth fret. Now, uh, that little slide could also be a hammer, as I, as I often do choose to do it. Now we're at the first measure, and we've got a D going to an F sharp minor 11. So the D is just the outer two string. And then I'm going to reach my pinky to the seventh fret of the first string. Now, you, you might feel a little bit disoriented with the capo at four. That's okay. Just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, eventually, your fingers will just kind of remember where they're supposed to go. So you play that seven, and notice that there's a half bar coming at the fourth fret. So I'm gonna hold on, this is really key. I'm gonna hold on to the seven, and then I'm gonna bar half of the fourth fret. Just actually two strings, strings six and five. And I'm gonna hold that bar for the whole measure, and then I'm gonna play second string, and then third string at the fifth fret like that. So watch how I do that. When you hear those multiple notes ringing together, that's really what gives some of the, the joy and the beauty to the solo guitar arrangement. So really um, to make a faithful effort to preserve as much sustain as you can and create that effect. Now I'm going to hold on to that fifth fret for a little moment and I'm going to reach my index finger. Notice that I've got my middle finger on the fifth fret. And I'm going to reach my index up to the fifth fret of the big string. And I'm actually going to hold on to that all the way till almost the end of the second measure just to, you know, squeeze any juice I can out of it. And then I'm going to continue much in the same way. So measure three. And that's pretty much the same, but now we're going to 11 and 12. So you're going to use your pinky to 11 and 12. Now, Masaki actually reaches back down to the fifth fret with his index finger. It's not an impossible stretch, and it you know, actually feels kind of nice. feels a little bit like yoga. Um, but I saw another cover on YouTube where that player decided, forget it, I'm just going to reach over the top and stick my thumb over the top. And I thought that was really um, optically very nice, so I decided to borrow that move. Like that. So that's kind of a clever trick, especially if you feel like you don't have the flexibility to do it with your index finger. There's a good chance I think you can get your thumb up there. So that's kind of a neat idea. Now we're coming off of that big stretch and we're going from 9 to 11. We're going to go to 12, but we're going to get our index on the 9th fret of the big string. 
So now I've got some thirds, and uh, these show up in almost all of Masaki Kishibe's tunes, um, so they're worth studying. But I'm going to start with this third shape. I've got my third finger on the 11th fret of the first string, and index finger on the 10th fret. I just move that down a whole step for another third, and then I move that down a half step. This time it's 7 and 7, so notice how my third finger kind of pulls in to share the same fret, 7 and 7. So that's a minor third, so it's major third, major third, minor third. And you can basically follow the whole scale up and down that way, so it's a really great way um, to develop a sense of freedom in this tuning. Now we're going to the sixth measure. Notice I've got my index finger on the fifth fret of the big string, and then I've got my middle finger on the fifth fret of the third string, and my pinky on the seventh fret of the first string. So play those, and I play the open string, and then I'm gonna slide to nine. But I like to kind of repluck that string to re-articulate it a little bit, and then I go to the 4th fret with my index finger, and now we've got some 16th notes. Da, 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 da. So um, if you weren't thinking 16th notes this whole time, now it's kind of the time to start. So you can actually kind of count the 16th notes. Very useful little trick. And then we're going to go to the 1st ending. Uh, now the composer actually uses his thumb reaches that around, and he appears, he's quite fond of that trick, he does that a lot. So that's why I wrote that there, so you'd be aware that that's how it was originally done. But it's not strictly speaking necessary, um, and I advise students to kind of pick their battles. If you're not comfortable with a thumb over, now might not be the time to tackle it, and uh, so I've actually played that without the thumb just fine. So if, if you're going to do it without the thumb, you would do your second finger maybe, index finger, and pinky. Bring your third finger in for that, while keeping your finger on the bass the whole time for the E minor 7. And then we've got a series of 16ths. So it's open 1, open hammer, and open. Try not to interrupt notes before they're done ringing. You don't want, you want them all to kind of blend together. And then you repeat that chord. And now we've got this really nice chord borrowed from the minor key. So I'm using a half bar on the first fret, just across the top three strings, strings one, two, and three. And then I've got a finger on the second fret, that's all. And that's a very appropriate moment to uh, a stop for some dramatic pause before we take uh, the repeat and go back to the beginning. So we're gonna take that. And uh, now this time, when we've reached measure six, we're going to play that and take the second ending, same chord. And uh, very similar, except that the melody is changing a little bit. So you want to count out those 16th notes. Make sure you do that right. It goes da 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 The ability to count out those 16th notes is very important because it helps you to maintain control and coherence even when you're practicing really slow. Everybody says practice slow, um, but there's a trick to it because if you go too slow, you can't really hear what you're doing. So this is how you can slow something down, but still do it with the correct rhythm. All right, so now we're at the B section, and again, the composer is using the thumb to get the thumb over on the fifth fret of the big string. And I think there's a really good case for it here because it gives you a lot of flexibility to do some of the other stuff with that chord. If you don't do that, you've got some really tough stretches ahead of you. Um, so kind of compare uh, the two of those and decide which one's going to work best for you. But I think if you can do the thumb over, that's a really good choice here. So I'm just going to show you how to do it with a thumb over and you can make adjustments if you need to. We're going to put our index finger on the fourth, open second, middle finger on the fifth, and then thumb's going to come over and actually pull down the fifth fret of the big string. Then our pinky's going to jump in and grab the seventh fret of the second string. And then we've got some more sixteenth notes, which we like. Now notice that my pinky finger is ending this measure on the seventh fret of the second string. I'm just going to slide that down to be on the fourth fret of the second string, and that's gonna set me up really nicely to do the first shape of measure 12. So I'm using my fingers three, two, and four there for a very specific reason, because after I do that chord, I have to have a finger free 
to the left of my hand to grab that second fret note. Like that. And that's just a little bit of a hammer on there. Now any finger can do the bass note coming up. Just make sure you have your pinky ready to do the fourth fret of the second string. And we go back to that chord shape now and measure 13. But this time we don't need to use these three fingers. We can just use fingers one, two, and three. And then from there, I'm gonna slide up. Notice that my third finger didn't come off the fretboard even. And then I'm gonna use my pinky to get the fifth fret and pluck the second string again. Notice that I never took my finger off of the fourth fret of the second string. Like that. I don't want to waste effort, you know, I don't want to pick it up and put it back down. Now measure 14. Just some 16th notes. So measure 15 is uh, pretty similar to what we've done before. When I get to 17, there's some new hammer-ons added. And then my middle finger is actually going to go up from the second fret to the fourth fret of the big string. And keep going up to the fifth fret. Now I'm going to measure 18. And so here's where it gets a little bit tricky. There's a lot of 16th notes, so we've got to really count this out. So starting from 18, I've got this. Da, 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 da. Notice that I had to put my index finger down on the fourth fret and then lift up a finger just so I could get the open string. And I'm going to jump down here to this shape by E minor seven over A. Let's see that again. So that's a little bit tricky. I recommend you just do one measure at a time and work your way slowly through it. And then to 19, we're gonna get our pinky finger now on the fourth fret of the second string. This one we wanna count out carefully. Da, 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 da. So that's a dotted eighth note, which get, has the value of three sixteenth notes. Da, 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 da. And uh, measure 19 is actually a kind of a, a measure of a 2-4. So there's sort of a feeling that there's some missing beats there. So that, that's really interesting and it helps kind of drive uh, the song back to the top, so to the C section. All right, so now we're at C and I've got my index finger on the fourth fret of the first string. And I'm going to start adding some 16th notes, so the, the kind of pace is going to pick up a little bit. And uh, it really helps, I think, to count the underlying 16th notes here. So it's a very, very useful trick to do that. And uh, make sure that you still try to produce that melody faithfully give the notes their maximum sustain, even though there's a lot more happening. So on measure 21, I'm starting with my second finger on the fifth fret of the big string, and my third finger on the fifth fret of the third string. And then as soon as I get my index finger onto the fourth fret of the second string, I'm quickly trying to get this shape where I've got open five, five, four because there's a nice fill here. And then you use your pinky to get the seventh fret of the second string before you go back to that kind of melody. So that's a bit tricky and it deserves a lot of practice. You know, you're likely to kind of mess that up. So uh, practice that more, practice that disproportionately to the other parts of the music. Now we're at measure 22. It's actually very similar to what we've done before, just a few extra notes that you've got to take care to count out. So now at measure 23, we go from this chord, this G chord, we play an open first string, and then we're going to hammer on to the second fret of the first string. And I like to use my third finger for that. And uh, then you're gonna go from three to two to open. So I wrote that just as a pull off. 
but you can actually do that as a bluesy slide where you slide from two to three and back in a, in a blink of an eye. Now we're at measure 24 and I've got my index finger on the second fret of the fifth string and I've got my second finger on the second fret of the second string. My pinky has to reach up to the fourth fret of the second string while I'm getting my index finger down to the first fret of the fifth string for the B flat. So that's a big stretch. And it kind of turns into this really interesting B flat chord shape. I've got my index finger on the first fret of the fifth string, second finger on the second fret of the fourth string, and now I've got my third finger on the second fret of the first string. Now in measure 25, this is probably the hardest measure in the tune. We're gonna start with some really simple thirds. Major third, minor third, minor third like that. Not really a big deal. You're gonna put your index finger on the fourth fret of the little string, and then you're gonna put your second finger on the fifth fret of the second string. Then you're gonna move up to five and seven. Now it's opening up a little bit because the minor third, so I've got my index finger on the fifth fret, and I've got my second finger on the seventh fret. And then I go up another whole step, and here's the tricky part. I've gotta drop down and get to what is one of the hardest chords in this whole tune. And it's a kind of E major chord over G sharp. And I'm not really sitting in a good position to do this, but you need to have some room underneath your elbow so you can quickly drop your elbow down and reach that difficult chord shape. So I highly recommend you give a lot of practice of that. So there's a bar there across strings one, two, three, and four, and then pinky stretching all the way to the sixth fret of the big string, pretty tricky chord. If uh, after some time of practice, you're just really not getting that, that's normal. I suggest you uh, adjust it down a little bit. You can do that by taking the melody note from the second string and actually moving that to the fifth fret of the third string. And once you've done that, it's pretty easy to grab the sixth fret and the fifth fret. So you'd be like, give yourself a little pause and then kind of switch to this half bar. That's a really um, good compromise if you're struggling with that. And uh, it's really okay to do that. You know, if you were starting a workout routine today, you probably wouldn't uh, follow the routine of your favorite bodybuilder on day one because you would hurt yourself. And in a similar vein, when you're learning guitar, it's okay to adjust things up and down a little bit. In fact, it's uh, advisable to do so. And I would argue that most guitar players, in fact, maybe all guitar players, really do that in some subtle ways. They kind of adapt what they play to suit their own playing style and uh, the, the things that they're strong at. Okay, so now we're going to measure 26. There's another stretchy chord, a G chord. We're gonna put our pinky on the fifth fret of the big string, and index finger on the second fret of the second string. And then we're going to play open second string, and I'm gonna use my second finger on the second fret of the second string, and slide that up to the fourth fret, before I put my pinky on the seventh fret of the high E string. And then I can grab the fourth fret of the bass with my index finger. That takes a little bit of practice and it feels a bit awkward at first. And then we're gonna go from five to four. You can do a slide or a pull. And then we're going to some familiar stuff in measure 27. So now we're at the end of C and we have the instructions to DC Alcoda. So this is really important. This is how the structure of the tune works. So DC Alcoda means da capo Alcoda. Da capo is the head, Alcoda is the tail. So we're going to jump to the head, which is the very, very beginning of the tune. And this time we're gonna play all the way through following the repeats and everything until we get to C. Now, if you look at measure 25 of C, you'll see that there's a, um, a note there that says the second time you do this, you're going to go to the coda. So you're gonna play that measure with the E over G sharp and the big crazy stretchy chord. Once you're done with that, you're going to just jump straight to the coda. And you can kind of see a hint at that because the double line between measures 25 and 26 is also giving you a clue to do that. So now I've done everything and I'm jumping to the coda. Uh, measures 28 and 29 are pretty similar to what we've done before. But 
there's a, a repeat there. And you can indulge that repeat as many times as you like. Uh, generally, when something is repeated, I think it's a good clue to kind of practice that back and forth a bunch of times. Not much due to say there, so we're going to go straight to measure 30. Pretty similar. In measure 31, we've got a fermata, which means we're going to hold it for an uncomfortably long time. Long enough that the listener is kind of thinking, is the song over? What's going to happen next? In my own lessons, I've found that students tend uh, not to give a fermata the amount of time it deserves. They'll go like... In fact, they'll usually basically ignore it. Well, it's really important, I think, um, to really hold, hold out a long note and then go to measure 32. Okay, so there's no set amount of time for how long that note is with the fermata, but it should feel a little bit tense and maybe kind of awkwardly long, okay? And now we're gonna to go to 32. So the key for 32 is that we want to make sure that each note has as much sustain as it can get. It's just a D major seven chord, which is open, open two, open four, open. So we start with that. And then we go to second, four, five, seven, nine, four, two, seven. And, and you can kind of um, change those around a little bit. I actually changed my ending around entirely because it's a nice place to just throw in a few extra notes of your own. And uh, measure 33, it's just a D major nine chord. And we're gonna strum. You can just take a, a finger, and just pull all the strings just like that. In fact, you can play all of them. They'll sound great. Okay, so implied by the fermata is that there's gonna be a bit of a, a ritardando because there was that big awkward pause and uh, we could definitely slow down after we reach that point, so. Or I like to think of it as more of a rubato kind of moment. That's where um, the time kind of disappears and it's kind of interpreted very freely and loosely by the performer. It feels very natural to play around with the time and slow it down towards the end so you can give a little bit more impact and uh, help people um, hear the end of your performance. All right, so that's it for the awesome tune, November by Masaki Kishibe. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of practice. I found that students range from learning this tune in two or three weeks um, which is quite rare, by the way, uh, to spending you know, months on it and really working to refine each and every measure. So no matter which uh, category you fall into, um, this tune uh, will sound beautiful when you give it the practice that it deserves. So take your time with it, go slowly, take small pieces of it and just kind of loop it over and over again and then start to add more. So just take two measures and loop it and play it and play it and play it and then add more and uh, don't jump too far ahead. I'll typically ask a student to work on one section at a time and not even bother with the other sections until they've gotten it somewhat down. All right, so that's it for the lesson on November by Masaki Kishibe. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe because I've got so many more coming. Thanks for watching.